<laughs> Due to my ankle, we actually are home again today. So we'll be live with you in a few minutes. We're home alone. We're home. You match today? Probably not. <laughs> Well, I want to go to the gym, so I'm remembering the times I could go to the gym with this shirt. What's up, Daryl? Thanks for joining us. We're going to start in a few minutes. We just got to wait for the green light from Hollywood, where the studios are. Roberto, Keith, thanks for joining us right now. Pockets, I love that shirt. I love that we can't take it off, but man. Yeah. It unzips here. That looks silly. And it unzips here. Oh. I know, that doesn't because it doesn't show the cleavage the right no. way. What if you did just wasn't one side? That looks stupid still. That looks stupid still. Yeah. I tried. She's hot and sexy no matter what, but. Yeah. All right. I think it's for time to retire the shirt. Time to retire that shirt, which typically means our daughter will steal it from her. Yes. As she already has. As she usually does. Oh, you're welcome, Daryl. <laughs> All right. Oh, wait. hello. I can't turn on my headphones. Me neither. Oh, because well, it's not plugged in. <laughs> I get it. Thank you, baby. All right. I just got a 30 second cue from. Do you hear an echo? Echo. 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 I can hear it in my headphone. Brought it in Pockets are truly beautiful, people say. Oh, thank you. I agree. That's not me. This one, me? Yeah. Oh, hello. Oh, me you. up on four. I could try yeah. to turn you on. Too loud or no? It's no. Hello? That's good. Hello, hello, hello. Hello? Too loud? No. I can't right. hear you at all. Seriously? Yeah. It's weird. I don't Is it know. all the way up? Yeah. That's weird. Hello? Oh, the. Now it's up? Not really. It's okay. All I'm right. Here. Just got the green light. We're going to go live. Alan Ellie down under the Aussie Swingers. Take a look. Check them out. Uh, everyone's amazing. It's always good to see oh, friends and family. Cool. That's why. Oh, that's why. It's always good to see friends and family joining us here. Hi, guys. And Ellie, we can't wait to see you here at your home. You're panda, coming home. Panda, panda, panda. We'll all panda together. I'm not sure we're going to do hookah. How do you panda? When we do hookah, <laughs> weird things happen. Yeah. Weird things happen when we have hookah. Hookah happens. Yep. All right. You ready? You Got to go from Hollywood. Ready? Let's do it. Playboy Radio's Holly and Michael live right here, powered by Dash Radio. This is Modern Love. We are back at home today because my ankle is still just a little tweaked. So, Doctor oh, Baby, ah, what? Ah, baby, I played on my ankle. Still played on my ankle, even though it's it's a little. I usually tweaked. play on my feet, so um, it was probably wiser to play on your feet. It's yeah, it was softball, honey. <laughs> Actually, what sport do? Well, I guess. NASCAR and F1, you don't, Formula One racing, you're not on your feet per se, true. but you're using them. True. So you need your feet for everything, goofball. Basically. It's true. Unless you're on a horse. Then, then you don't need your feet. You gotta hold on. Well, you got legs. What, you, yes, but the legs will grip. Oh, Good feet. point. Good point. You have to have strong inner thigh muscles to grip. We met a couple on That's our honeymoon. I suck at riding horses. <laughs> hey, wait. Uh -huh. Never mind, I won't go there. Um, we met a couple on their honeymoon while we were in Jamaica, and they'd never gotten horseback riding before. And they went horseback riding for the first time. They loved it. They went in the water. It's hot in here. Before it's, It is hot in here. Before we um, get started, Bill asked a question, and we always uh, attempt to take as many questions as we can from Facebook. Because as Playboy Radio's Holly and Michael live here on Modern Love. Modern Love, it's the mindset you need, the life you deserve. That's how we look at it. They asked... Um, how did you get your nickname? And we got asked that a lot when we go on location. I'm going to get up and turn my mic down just a little so yes, I don't Yes, you do, down. and you just messed my headphones up. Oh, uh, too bad. There you go. Don't touch All right. Me. Pockets got her nickname from our daughter. My daughter, our daughter, was four and a half years old when she met Pockets. Yes. Uh, I had been in the lifestyle, of course, our children, and we can go over that definitely. How do you, when do you, or do you tell your children? That's a big topic we've covered many times. And I'll write it down to uh, children to remember to talk about it. Yeah, uh, That's the one thing with Facebook Live and when there's cameras of in the, the studio. Corn. Not of the corn. Not on the corn. Remember eating corn? Anne Marie and Marcus, great meeting you guys too. Uh, 
My daughter met Pockets, and if anyone remembers Swing Season 1, Pockets was blonde. Yes. You were gorgeous blonde. You are my evil twin sister. I'm hoping for the other. <laughs> well, hey, then I get... She's the crazy one. So she's yes, the crazy of course one. you'd like her. Better sex, right? Yeah. You're peeking out. What are you saying? It? You're peeking out. No, you're great in bed. Thank so, you. So, is that me or you? What am I... Last night was a... That's me. Last night was a silly night because we were laying there and you were reading songs. As I was I reading the meaning out. behind there. So, let's get back to why your nickname is Pops. Yes. Get back to that. You were blonde. Yeah. And when you met Samantha, what did she say? She says, you look like my favorite doll, Polly Pockets. Yes. And your your name rhymes with Polly. Polly. Holly rhymes Holly with Polly. Holly rhymes with Polly. So I'm yep. going to call you Holly Pockets. And therefore... Uh, she became Holly Pockets. We got lazy, dropped off the of Holly, and that's Pockets. And it's just Pockets. If I call you Holly, what do you think? Well, I know you're mad at I'm me. I'm not mad at you when I call you Holly. A child, you know what? Bringing that topic up leads us to a conversation that I didn't plan to have. But let's talk for a minute... What it's like to be, because we are swingers. We are in a consensually non-monogamous relationship. Our children are currently 12 and one's about to turn 14, our son. Oh, crap. And Do you have a birthday present for him? Yeah, he already <laughs> got his Xbox One TA39 with that huge screen TV. Right. So he got his birthday present yeah. early. We get asked often, what do you tell your children? And we say nothing. We get asked by Vanillas, what do you tell your children? Well, why would we? And they say, well, because of what you do, shouldn't they know? The first thing I ask Anyone, lifestyle or non-lifestyle, typically though it's non-lifestyle people yeah. who don't seem to get it, right? right? Lifestyle, lifestyle people understand just as if you were lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, questioning, or queer, yeah. you don't necessarily have to share what goes on in your bedroom. If you're a lesbian or gay, yes, your kids are going to know that your choice is the same gender. Yeah, but they don't know exactly what you're doing in the bedroom. Well, come on. Kids at young ages oh. can perceive things. Kids can perceive. And no sex education is sex education. Yeah, kids on the, on the playground talk a lot. All right, but let's get back to the point at hand. Okay. We do not feel, because we don't wear a label across our forehead, and we don't wear, well, right now it says the X run, which was just kind of an adult-themed, not X-rated, but an adult-themed mud run. It was fun. It was a ton of fun. Yeah, with a bunch of... Things. Yeah, and blow dolls. We hosted yeah. it for two years, uh, one in Miami, one in Tampa. But children don't need to know what's going on in our bedroom or when we're doing things privately. Why? Because there's no need, even age appropriate. We know couples with children that are adults over the age of 18. And again, there's no need. And what I say to people is simple. When they're vanilla and they say, well, don't you tell your children? What are you going to tell your children? I say, when's the last time you and your partner had sex? Typically, they look at me and say, none of your business. None of your business. None of your business, Michael. And I say, just humor me. Ballpark it for me. Oh, uh, two weeks ago. Great. They did it in a ballpark? They did it in a ballpark, yeah. Ha. Huh. <laughs> so, when they tell me two weeks ago, I literally just look at them and say, did you tell your kids about it? And they look at me and say, why would I? And I just hold up my hands like this. Because yeah. it's the same thing. Why would we tell our children about our sex lives, right. no matter how we play Right. Now, like I said, lesbian and gay, yes, your children are going to understand that you prefer the same gender, but you're still not discussing with them when, where, and how often you have sex. It's just not necessary. No, it's not. I don't see and it being it's necessary. probably a little inappropriate, too. Uh, and, well, again, yeah, age appropriate. Of course. Age appropriate. Yeah, at our children's age, they don't need to know when, how often, or that kind of stuff, right? Yes. It's about if they're happy, they're safe, they're secure, and they have structure. That's a big deal. Kids ask you questions about sex. It's funny, when a three-year-old asks, where did I come from, or how are babies made, <laughs> and an 11-year-old asks the same question, your answer is different because an 11-year-old is not going to accept the same answer a three-year-old. A but, stork? Right. But remember the key thing there. They asked one question, and that's where did I come from. Right. You can tell them you came from mommy's tummy. They didn't ask, how was I made? How, how did I get put in there? Yeah, how, they didn't ask that. So, humor aside, the fact is, answer the question a child asks. Don't assume they want to know more. Yes. Now, when they ask, give them an environment that is safe. Because if you don't answer their question or they don't feel safe asking you that you won't overreact or freak out, then, well, what's going to happen? They're going to Google it. Of course they're going to Google it. And they're going to find out information. I don't think you want them to know. Times have changed, and I know that back in the back, back in the day, day, there was the birds and the bees talk, and everyone debated on when was the right time and how to do it and when to do it. 
But now they can find out so young and about just about anything. I think starting them young with sex education is the appropriate sex course, education, right? Of course, but uh, because everything's right there now. It is. It is. And what do I mean by appropriate sex ed? It's what Pockets just said. It's what I'm sharing. Age appropriate. There are some great tools online. The only thing I beg of you, if you look at information online, is look who sponsors that website. Yeah. I am not anti-religion. Religion has a place in society. But if a website is sponsored by a religious organization, the information you're going to receive is completely biased. As Swinger is living the lifestyle, how we see things as unbiased as we attempt to be, we are biased. We do believe, I am biased, I do believe that everyone should be open-minded. Of course, just accepting of others. Right, I do believe that everyone should be sex positive. It's not a disease, you don't get a test. <laughs> but I believe everyone should think positively about Sex. Do you have a bra on? No. Oh, well, I was going to tell you to take your shirt off. I was going to tell you to take your shirt off, but that wouldn't work you too You probably well. couldn't see it if I hid the computer. But no, 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 no. no, no. Uh, you brought up something, though, which is so relevant, and Bill uh, Zezlik just asked. You and I put ourselves out there. Thank you for calling this break. We put ourselves out there, and he believes we get recognized, which we do. And we're, we're humbled when we do. He's asking, what about the parents of our kids? Now, my ex and your ex has expressed concern. Well, no, my ex did. Your ex really didn't. What if the parents don't agree with how you live and don't let Samantha, our daughter, be friends with their kids? Right. We sure that that would be a shame. That would be. And it shouldn't reflect on our parenting style. She's a straight-A student, right. great athlete, respectful uh, a leader and all that stuff. All around good kid. All around really good kid. Not because just... it has nothing to do with how we raise them. Well, right. Because how we choose to live our life uh, being open-minded, sex positive, and yes, swingers in a consensually non-monogamous relationship is not the same as how we raise our children. Right. In a sense, though, you know what, though? We teach them to be open-minded to, exactly. to, other, to other genders and to other... Everything. Sexuality. Religion, sexuality, everything. Our daughter and our son have stood up for people that have been discriminated against. And I believe that has a lot to do with the fact they don't know how we live our life, uh, you know, meaning privately in the bedroom. But they do understand that you and I believe in equality. You and I don't mm -hmm. practice isms. Right. You know, racism, sexism, discriminationism. Mormonism. <laughs> Mormonism. <laughs> so we do. Workers, unfortunately, as I've shared, I was uh, Tuesday night as the executive dire uh, medical director of the Oncology Association of Southern California. I was sitting with the CEO at dinner, and he's bragging how he cheated on his first two wives. He's cheating on his third wife. It's a little weasel, but I stayed silent. A few of the people recognized me from TV and my voice from radio. I get a call from HR the next day telling me that I'm bad for business. As much as I increase revenue, by, I believe at that point, it was only about 67% increased revenue and saved over 50% in costs that had been done, they still felt I was a bad reflection of the company and of the group uh, because I believe in open relationships. Yet, we discussed, he cheats, he acknowledged, he brags, but they didn't see that as, as right. an issue. So it does affect some colleagues that I still consult with have no problem with it. Because again, what they do, I don't judge what I do, they don't judge. Right. And a number of parents, give you a quick, funny story. Going through my divorce, my ex-wife sued for full custody of our daughter because we're swingers and we're out. Mm -hmm. And that was painful. That was extremely six-figure expensive. <laughs> my daughter, that was for my daughter's education. And well, thank goodness she'll still have money for her education. But we had to spend it because I wasn't going to lose custody right. of right. my daughter. And there was no case law. But part of the process was we had to submit 10 names and she had to submit 10 names of character witnesses. Yep. My attorney handed me her list, looked at it, handed it right back, said, approve them all. Yep. You remember that? Yes, I do. And Philip said, you got to be kidding. What are you doing? We got to go over this. I said, Philip, eight of them are in the lifestyle. The other two, bless them, not bad people, smoke weed on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. You know, do this, do that, do this. They're not going to get on the stand and judge me. No. So not take them all. My ex-wife canceled that part of the process. Yep. Remember that? Yes, I Because did. you don't know. Swingers are everywhere. 
consensually non-monogamous people are everywhere and open-minded people are everywhere. They're doctors, they're lawyers, they're They're teachers, the people they're that deliver our mail. They're people that, that, that are Lyft and Uber drivers. They're not just educated. They're not just uneducated. They're low, middle, upper class. But we don't look at the socioeconomic status. We look at your attitude. Of course. Would you agree? I totally agree. I look at an attitude far more than yep. I do an action. Yep. So when I think about it, it or makes me laugh. for a living. Yeah, or what you do I mean, you're not educated. It's, it's crazy, especially, I mean, never mind. What, 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 what were we going to say? <laughs> no, I was just going to say that I, I wonder if people think that we're not educated enough or we're just, we, we do this for certain purposes or, I don't know, it's just crazy to think what other people think about. It's funny that stuff. some people see what we do and think, oh, it's so glamorous. Listen, we love being live with you on Playboy Radio, powered by Dash Radio. Proud of that. We love being at the events and speaking and doing our broadcast live on location. But there is pain that goes along with being out, which is why so many, and we respect you, that you can't come out. Of and course. we are out. We attempt to be a voice. We cannot speak for everyone because not everyone's going to agree with us. And we have haters, too. In our own community, we have people that lie to basically our faces uh, when we talk to them. Oh, I didn't say that negative stuff about you. Yeah, you did. <laughs> a couple dozen people can't be wrong, you know. Oh, yeah. But you want to be haters. Hate. Hate. Because we're not going to change. We're not going to change. Not everyone. at all. The other thing we get humbled by is uh, you talk, Bill, about parents. Parents will come up to us and whisper because, again, they don't want to be outed. Thank you for your show. Hey, when you said X, Y, or Z last week or two years ago, really resonated with me. Or uh, on TV, wow, such an education. We don't want to practice mm -hmm. being a swinger in the lifestyle, right. but we want to believe the way you guys do. We're educated that it's better to be open-minded and to communicate rather than cheat. Yes. You know? Yeah, we've yeah. even be, been approached at Magic Mountain, and I mean, it's crazy what who you think that is in the lifestyle or yeah. who watches it. It's, it's Michelle, crazy. I'm trying to understand what should the answer be. Yeah, there are more people that think sexuality defines personality, and therefore there will be people who judge you based on your personal choices, That's even true. though they shouldn't. You're right, because sexuality doesn't define personality. Right. There's some people you think look this way, but then act that way. Right. And don't ever. Don't ever think you know what goes on behind closed doors. No. My ex used to do that. That couple's so happy. Why can't you be like them? And I didn't say it to her. You know this story. Yes, I, knew. I do. I didn't tell her because it wasn't my place to out this person. But this man was cheating with multiple women on his wife. And I'm thinking, you want me to be like him? No, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think you want me to be like yeah, him. It's funny. I, I mean, really even don't. look at Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. Everyone thought they were the perfect couple. And then all of a sudden this happens. And you think, yep. It's funny when people say that... If they can't make it, how am I going to make it? Oh my God, that's silly. That's that's totally silly. Why are you basing your relationship off celebrities that you don't even know? I did some research recently, you know, on that and conducted a study on that. And it's the the way that people identify with their favorite celebrity couples looking at Brangelina. You know, yeah. if their relationship fails, it may be for similar or different reasons. But don't let that reflect in your relationship. Not at all. Robbie Robinson makes a great point. He's the parent. He believes in open communication and honest communication with his children. But he reserves the right to still be the parent. Of course. And they're over 20. It's a 22-year-old parent. Wow. So, I mean, 22-year-old children. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's what's important. That's what I find very relevant is that we keep the channels of communication open. Our kids will hear something. And, again, it's not because we're swingers living the lifestyle. It's anyone. It's everyone. If you just allow them to talk. We can laugh with them about questions, but we don't laugh at them for Not questions. We don't say, we don't punish them for saying, hey, I heard uh, somebody talking about blowing job. What's a blowing job? <laughs> so we make sure they understand, again, age appropriate. Our daughter once asked you, how do lesbians have sex? Yes. Because she heard the term scissoring. Right. What was that on, like? On a, on a, on a show. On Lee or something. Yeah. I don't know. I told her and I very age appropriate age, age appropriate is what it was and I mean she still she still quite didn't put it together but she, it, she got the answer that she wanted right and you explained you didn't she didn't say do they use things to put inside themselves no no not at all. how do they she just asked what scissors scissoring is. and so and you I showed, her showed her with your what it, what it was how'd you show her just uh, yeah the vaginas <laughs> She asked, if we don't tell her, she's going to look it up. And then she's going to learn about things that maybe, maybe we don't want her to know you yet. You know what's funny? After I told her that, she's like, that's boring. Yeah. <laughs> Bill, Bill had a comment. Let me read it. People that care don't matter and people who matter don't care. 
Yes. You know, I that's like that so thing. true. And Ellie and Al are commenting there, right? No one has a right to judge how you raise your own children. And for what it's worth, you are the most wonderful parent. Thank you, Alan. Aww. You actually know you know our children. You spend time with our family. Thank you. Bring you bring them Tim Tams. Yeah, you bring them Tim Tams. They, uh, they like you for many reasons, and that is one of them. Yes. Again, going back to the fact, though, that as long as they're good people, they're respectful people, they're kind people, and they do their best not to stereotype or judge, I feel we're doing a good job as parents. Yes, I really are. do. I, it's just... It's just one of those you know, types. And, and Lisa is saying, Michelle is saying, people assume swingers are sex addicts. So far from the truth. We may like to get freaky, but we are not freaks. Yes. Sex addiction is very rare because as swingers, there are, gosh, I mean, your ex-husband might be considered a sex addict, but he wasn't a swinger. Yeah, I would consider him one. You consider, okay, when it starts... Well, because to, it started to affect, I mean, it, he right. did it at work. He did it everywhere. And it's not just sex. It's looking at pornography. It's going to adult clubs. It's always needing uh, to get off in more and more ways, more and more often where it affects right. your home life, your work life, and yes. things like that. So Michelle is right. Uh, swingers are not sex addicts by any means. We you made, like sex? I mean, we enjoy do it you? a lot. I do. I fell asleep. I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you. You were reading songs. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, I'm so tired. And it's a misperception. Swingers have a ton of respect for their relationship. Cheaters don't. Not at all. Cheating. They don't respect the partner at all. Cheating based on <laughs> lies. Swinging built on trust. Yes. That's a foundation. And it's very sad that there are people who call themselves swingers living the lifestyle that still cheat. Yeah. They still cheat. They, oh, I just thought it would be okay. No, no. In this lifestyle, I believe you ask permission, not forgiveness. Yes. Yes. I mean, rules and boundaries. They're I, not. Go ahead. It, I mean, it still happens. It's right. Not, it's not a for sure thing that it, their, your partner is not going to cheat on you. But you don't do it for the reasons that you think they're going to cheat. Yep. I think that's crazy. It's very crazy. One other way, too, you know, when you think about um, teaching kids from growing up, there are certain shows that when somebody is unfaithful to somebody on a TV show, it's a show you watch with your children. Highly, highly recommend. When we watch TV with our children, we call that psychology uh, lingo is teachable moments. Yes. And that's an opportunity to share that that's not appropriate behavior. For a woman, you shouldn't do it or accept it. For a man, you shouldn't do it or accept You know, little boys, little girls. Of course. Also, there's one episode on TV, a sitcom, that has been researched more than any other episode and proven to be more educational about the topic of condoms. What is it? Friends. Friends. And do you remember? Favorite show. Do you remember which episode? Yes, when Rachel finds out she's pregnant and tells Ross. Yeah. And what did Ross say? It's a condom. And she acknowledges that condoms are only, you know, effective. Effective, ninety-seven percent. Our daughter, since age of nine, because she did watch that show. It is kid friendly. Can, uh, can recite that statistic and yes, still can. She can. And it's good again. These are teachable moments. She doesn't ask, what's a condom do? No. That came now at 12. But at that point, she learned that. And you, you look at TV shows and all of the recreational sex that goes on without oh, consequences. It's left and right. right. It's important for children to see that and understand that. And as swingers, again, we're not sex starved. We're not sex crazed. We're not walking around looking... To, uh, to have sex That's with it. everyone. Right. No, not at all. When we hug you, we're not humping your leg. No. <laughs> Unless yeah. you're Gerard Butler, and then that's totally different. Yeah. Michelle, thank you for, for hearing my wisdom, but loving my beard. I love you, and we miss you. <laughs> you were down there one week or two weeks before us. Gosh, can't wait to be with the Playful Pussycats in April in Jamaica. Check out wildwomenvacations.com for that. In March, we'll be with the incredibly Young Swingers Week. Go to youngswingersweek.com. In January, uh, the 3rd through the 10th or 11th will be at Desire, DesireResorts.com. We will be doing our seminars. We will be broadcasting live on location. And over uh, New Year's Eve, we will be in Miami with LLVClub.com. Go to HollyandMichael.com. has all the information right there. All the information. I do need this trimmed a little. I need, yeah, I need more. I need this trimmed a just a little bit. Just around the edges. I said earlier... <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're so well laser I, You're so, but you're so gorgeous. Even you know what? Even if you had a few whiskers sticking out, I wouldn't even notice because I'm so in love with you. The thing is, people. What on is Instagram, the thing? Like these gorgeous women are. Is that the thing? Literally shaving their face. What? Yeah, li like literally shaving their face with with foam and razors and everything. I think it's crazy. You, well, don't wouldn't you get like razor bumps and stuff on your face? I I. I, I 
Razor, bur- I don't know. I've never been a woman. You buzz or buzz it? Yeah, yeah. It's so <laughs> sexy when I see you buzzing your nipples. And I see you buzzing there's your face. Sometimes there's hair on there. Women okay. do have hair. I remember the first time I hooked up with a woman. I was probably 13 or 14 when this, I was 12 the, when I lost my virginity. Oh my God. But at 13 or 14, the first woman or girl, she was 18, I think. And she had hair uh, on her breast. Like sometimes little peach fuzz. Do. I didn't it's know it. Buzz, it was like weird. It. You just buzz it off. I, I'm not like judging in it. The shower, you just. I'm not judging, and I just didn't know it. Guinevere, see, no black today. Um, and it, it, I just didn't you know get, it. You get nipple hair. Uh, well, yeah, it's, yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I do, I get do. There. <laughs> so as I was saying, and Robbie Robinson just wrote, cheating is cheating. Have respect for your spouse, and don't assume. Have open conversations. There is cheating in the lifestyle, too. And this has become a topic. I want to separate these two. Because there was a recent breach on another website. Yes. Now, Ashley, Absolutely. unfortunately, Ashley Madison, you and I completely against because they promoted affairs, they promoted that, cheating. I mean, that's the whole website was for. That's what it was for. for cheating on Life your is short, have an affair. Right. I think that was one of their taglines. Yes. Our tagline, modern love, the mindset you need, the life you deserve. Do it together. A secure me yeah, creates a strong we. Uh, Wheaties box. Which one? The, all of them. All of them? Yeah. I love Thanks, baby. <laughs> Knuckles. Knuckles. Way to go. Rules and bonders, as I said earlier, aren't created to hinder. They should be discussed, communicated, and agreed upon to help. So both parties in the relationship feel heard, feel comfortable, and feel safe. Yes. You and I have met people that that have said, well, do you hear music? I do hear music. Hear it's music. so weird. All right, anyway. Um, <laughs> that have said, well, you know, my husband really doesn't want this to happen, but if it does, and that is a red flag to you and I. What is it telling you in your mind? It's telling that you're not communicating well enough with your partner and not coming to an agreement. Because right. even if you feel comfortable and they don't, that you've got to come to a middle ground with your partner. Because you're doing this together. Right. You're not doing it for yourself. You're doing right. it to enhance what you have. Not enhance, but just add a little layer. Absolutely. You're adding an extra layer. As you and I have talked about, people said... Uh, on you and I talk a lot, or you talk on Facebook. We both talk, mostly you, but I'm sometimes on Twitter also. That you, if you're not doing this together, then you're doing it for the wrong reasons. And swingers living the lifestyle, and I am focusing on swingers because we are swingers. We're not polyamorous. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do get into some BDSM, but not enough. Where, excuse me, I would call myself an expert, an authority, yes, but not an expert. Okay. As a dom, definitely an expert, but not all the aspects of BDSM. You said ass. Ass. Specs. Pecs. Let me see the specs of your ass, baby. That looks good. That looks good. Uh, my, I got a hard on for you. See? Uh, I got two hard ons for you. Right. Wow. Anyway, I know that's. That's crazy. I do not have two penises. Seven years, two hard ons. Wow. I do not have job. two penises. Really? <laughs> but again, boundaries are there for a reason. You're doing it as a couple. Being in any relationship shouldn't be, uh, like I said, ask for forgiveness, not permission. If you don't like it, if you don't feel comfortable with a rule or boundary you and your partner have come up with, if you want more or you feel there should be less, then discuss it with your partner. Don't break it. Not at all. Just because you want it doesn't mean you should go and get it. Right. That's where, and again, you're not a sex addict, but that's where addiction to lying can can occur. Addiction to cheating. Because if the thrill and excitement is what you're craving then you need to communicate with your partner. And, and you and I recommend, I mean, I can do the coaching or locally have some counselor coach you because you're going to destroy your relationship. If you enter this swinger lifestyle mm-hmm. with cracks in your foundation, what happens? It breaks apart. And you know what? Even if you have a great founda- foundation, you've got to always communicate because there can start a crack in the walls or the foundation. Right. You can start a crack. And swinging will not fix not at all. a broken relationship. It's not cock. <laughs> that was good. It's not cock. It's not you cock. Can, you, with, listen, it's an attitude, not an accident. With the right attitude, you can get a lot of action. And if you like, cock. Right. Cock. Cock. But it's not cock that'll... I love it. That was actually really good. <laughs> Carissa makes a great point. If a couple is a swinger and one is cheating to her, and I'm going to agree, that person is in the lifestyle for the wrong reasons. Of course. Couples that swing are in it to spice things up. And they do it together. I completely agree. I often say that when we play with single women or couples, I love chocolate cake. Yes. I am let me, well, you not know, anymore. Not more because I went gluten free. Gosh darn it! Just just for. I gotta make you non gluten. Yeah. Let me then say I love dark chocolate mousse because I can eat it. It's gluten free. Yeah. And the whipped cream they use is gluten free too. Yes. 
Now, <laughs> I would be, that. you to me are the dark chocolate mousse and the whipped cream. You are everything. When we add someone else, they might be that little semi-sweet chip that they put in the middle <laughs> right. that adds just a little extra flavor for that that's bite. Not, that's not a chip, honey. But, that, <laughs> but that's it. It's a little extra spice. It's a little extra flavor. Right. I don't need it. I don't even want it. Right. But I do enjoy it. Yes. Does that make sense? Oh, yes, totally makes sense. And, and when I do, you know, if I wanted it, I tell you, baby, I'm kind of in the mood to play. I like seeing you do this. I like seeing when this happens to you. Um, maybe I want this. Maybe I want that. And we discuss it. Right. We discuss it. It's what we and do it's together. Outside of our boundaries, we don't do it. Chris, I just gave you credit. You are absolutely right. It's not without, outside of our boundaries, we don't do right. it. Right. And just because you want it, it doesn't, doesn't mean light, you right. should go and get it. What life? <laughs> that life? I looked up and I was like, look at that life. Uh, John made a great point. Just because you want it doesn't mean you should go get it. Absolutely. Yes. Because um, it's not a need. Well, it shouldn't be a need. It shouldn't be a need. Because to me... Needs, you need to tell your partner. Well, needs to me are non-negotiable. Yes. Wants are negotiable. I want water. Do I need it out of this, my favorite mug? No, because I still want water. That was for my birthday. That was. And we it's went your to favorite Medieval mug. times, yes. <laughs> my favorite place on earth. It was great. It was a good time. My point being, if you need it, then you need to discuss this with your partner. And if your partner doesn't agree with it, then you need to consider moving on and being in it as much as you like, love, care about each other. It's not fair to each other to be in a relationship where your needs aren't being, being met. Yes. Because eventually, temptation becomes uncontrollable. Yes. And, and resentment, too. Resentment, too. So you might be tempted and then you won't do it because you're staying true to your word. But you might start to resent your partner. Yes. Let's not have that happen. No. Let's you let's not have that happen. You love your partner and be happy in yeah. your relationship. Yep. That's what's better. Yeah, I know. Well, chocolate. But other than that, nothing's better. No. <laughs> so I want to go back to this breach. Uh, and we're being asked how I got you into the lifestyle. No, I didn't get pockets. Nobody should. You get me. I died. <laughs> True. That was another friend's, friends one. Episode. Yeah. You go, we go. That's um. Oh crap. That's backtrack. 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 Yeah. You, you know. You again. go. See you later. <laughs> exactly. All right, gone by. I'm, I'm gonna live. No. I was in the lifestyle since I was 18. It'll be 20 years next year. Pockets, you've been in the lifestyle with me. We've been together. Seven. We've been together seven years in like three or four months, and we've been in the lifestyle for seven of those years. Three months. Yeah. yeah. Three months. Almost seven of those years, and it was because in bed one night. Uh, after hearing you ask me about my past, I've always shared honestly with you about my past. If you couldn't accept me for who I am and what I've done and where I've been and those I've been with, then I didn't think we would be a good, healthy couple. Yes. And what happened? I wanted to go. Holy cow. It sounded so cool. I just yeah. wanted to... I, I, I've never been in that environment before. So. And you had fantasies. Remember? I had your... fantasies about women and what I could do to them. And what they could do to you. <laughs> <laughs> so after sex, you asked me, Hey, how would you feel about taking me to a lifestyle party? Yes, and you took me, and we discussed everything beforehand. I mean, you can't discuss everything. No, as much as we could. As much as we could, and the first time we went, I was just enthralled by it. Nervous? It was crazy. Of course I was nervous. Yeah. I was about to pee my pants. <laughs> Do you remember how you felt after making out passionately with a woman the first time? I felt like I cheated on you, because it. I know she was right there. You were right there. You said it was okay. I had never... I mean, I was in a relationship with you... And I was kissing someone else, which right. was weird to me. Because again, she, listen, don't forget, ladies, if you're bisexual, or men, if you're bisexual, being with anyone sexually without permission, the consent, you know, or the rule of, of agreed upon with your partner, that's cheating. I think it's Spanish music, by the way. Oh, uh, that's cheating. <laughs> yes, it is cheating. It doesn't, it, it's not only because it's the opposite sex, though, it could be the same gender. Yes, it's if you, still cheating. It's still cheating. So, your okay. If doesn't know about it, it's still cheating. A hundred percent. So you felt you were I saying I felt like there. I was cheating on you because I'd never done that before. And yeah. And you were saying it was okay. But in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, he's going to get mad at me later. This is something that... Your ex did that. Yeah, my ex did that. <laughs> and you did it, which was weird. And all, I remember walking up the hill. I'm like, are you okay? What's good? What's going on in your mind? And what are you thinking? And you're like, that's hot. I, I was... I, I had a permanent it's, erection that night. It's still... Um, saying a lot for me because never. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all night it was like eleven fifty nine. It happened eleven fifty eight. The yeah, last exactly. Um, but anyway, I just I it took me probably a couple times to, to kiss a woman before I felt like safe. Safe. Right. Yes. 
I think that's a fair word. Yes, it was. It is a fair word. Playboy Radio's Holly and Michael, Modern Love, right now, coming to you, powered by Dash Radio. If you're watching on Facebook Live, go download the app. It's free to listen, and it's commercial-free for iOS devices and Android devices all over the world. Unfortunately, there's two countries right now that can't access the Dash Radio app. What are they? Australia. And the UK. No, the UK. (laughs) Kentucky's not its own nation. The UK. Aussie Swingers. Thank you for tuning in on Facebook Live. You can also try dashradio.com slash Playboy Radio. That might work in Australia and the UK. We'll, uh, we'll ask Ellie and Al of the Aussie Swingers to check it out. They have a wonderful podcast. I, I don't know. So I, I don't understand. In Jamaica, uh, it worked. In queen. Mexico, it worked. Queen doesn't want it. Queen might be saying, hey, because they didn't accept my invite to Buckingham. Yeah, right? she, she never invited us. <laughs> I invited her here. And uh, with the good soap. Right, with the good soap. And the good and towels. The towels. 11 of them. All right. There was a breach recently on Adult Friend Finder. We touched on it, talking about Ashley Madison. It was a site that you Which and I... Which I'm okay I... with. No, no, we're not okay with Ashley Madison. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm okay <laughs> right. that it got hacked. Right. I find that Adult Friend Finder is being blamed, and I don't feel they should. Now, talking about security of information, of I mean... Of course, that's different. John Podesta's emails. He was the head of Hillary Clinton's political campaign. His emails got hacked. It must run in the family. What? The hacking of the emails and Clinton. No, well, no, no. <laughs> Clinton kidding. didn't get hacked, though. Remember, oh, Clinton gotcha, gotcha. deleted, gotcha. supposedly deleted emails. But let's not. Let's stay away from politics, please. If they can be hacked, if the government can be hacked, how can anyone really, really, truly think right. that a website can't be hacked? Adult Friend Finder is one of many adult sites. They don't tell you to cheat. They may give you the forum that... That gives you the opportunity. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. But isn't any dating website? It, it doesn't. Give yes. You, it, it gives you the form. It's there. They are not responsible for the people that go on. Thank you. They're not responsible for Thank you. your actions or your decisions in life. So Thank you. They're just there. They're there to make people. platform. They're they're a platform. Their their sole goal is to bring people together, but it's not to hurt other people. It's no. not to hurt anyone. If their marketing suggests it, I'm against it. Yes. I haven't seen that. I remember seeing it a while ago, bringing it up to them and saying we can't, you know, and, and it was very small suggestion. But let's look at statistics. Research, scientific research shows that of all divorces that are currently occurring, close to 50% of current divorces, we're not talking how many divorces, but of the divorces that are occurring, close to 50% of them are due to Facebook. Wow. Facebook. I totally, totally Because see people that. are reconnecting. They're finding yes. past. They're creating these identities for themselves. Bottom line is, it may give you the forum, but like you said, it didn't tell you to do it. Right. Zuckerberg or Zuckerberg? Is that Zuckerberg. Name? He's not telling you, hey, go find your first love, leave who you're with, right. and marry them. But not at all. But we've known so many people that have done that. Yes, we do. We uh, hear so many yep. stories all the time, and it's funny because I think that people think Oh my God, I love them in high school. Oh my God, they were my elementary sweetheart. And then they get... they. You had a kindergarten husband. I did have a kindergarten husband. Oh my God. Yep. I could say his name, but I won't. But holy cow, we we kissed and we made it official. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. That's so cute. But again, it goes back to what you said. Look at Adam and Eve. The fruit was hanging there. He did, if you believe in that, I'm just saying, that's sort of the story. He didn't have to grab... Oh, the air kicked in. Fire. He didn't have to grab the apple. No. Right? But he did. He so, should have asked permission. Should have asked permission. So to me, the big issue though, so this occurred, it was a site that was meant for hookups, and it was a site used by many swingers. Yeah, my ex used it. Many, yeah, your ex used to cheat. Yes. We know a lot of consensually non-monogamous couples, polyamorous couples, swinging couples, couples that are only into three sims, whether it's a single man or a single woman, mm-hmm. that do it together, that use the site together. Yes. And, and, and I'm concerned, I find my bigger issue is it makes me sad, and I understand why, but it makes me sad those couples have to be concerned and feel ashamed if their name is out there. Right. Right? Yes. Because of them. they didn't break any rule. Not at all. They're doing it consensually. Yep. Swingers do it consensually. But yet we have to fear for loss of employment, loss of custody. There's a lot of things. I mean, I've provided recently to, I mean, it's, it's over 100 people. And it happened recently too. My case number in court because my case made case law. Help your case is helping others. You cannot lose custody of your children 
if your ex sues you because you're in a lifestyle. Yes, you cannot. The judge decided that no, what happens in the privacy of the bedroom is protected, whether you're a swinger, polyamorous, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, questioning or queer. My, my, and I'm, wish my, I wish I didn't have to go through that, but at least that was possible. Right. Came out of and it. you know what? Even adult stars can't lose their children because of it. Even That's what? their job. Even, oh yeah, adult film stars. You're right. Yeah. You're right. That's their job. That's what they do. And we should, we should really stop judging. Seriously, people. Stop judging. God, there's so, Not all there's people. so much to worry about in life. Why care? I mean, just open well, your mind up. The why be concerned with what other people are doing in the privacy of their own right. bedroom if it doesn't right. hurt you? Right. I'm caught. You're, you you are wrapped around your suit. I'm wrapped around my cords. So I like being in the studio. Like, oh my god, I should catch you tied up. Never. Never <laughs> happening. Like one opportunity. People are asking, we talk often, how do I get started as a swinger living the lifestyle? We can talk and we have on other shows about how to be a true dom as a man or dom, which is D-O-M-M-E, as a woman. Dom? Dom. Dom, still dom. Dominatrix. Dominant, dominatrix, all that stuff. We've talked about those. How, though, to get started in the swinger lifestyle? You, I, I believe it's similar to buying real estate. With real estate, what are the three key things? Communicate. No. <laughs> You're so funny. Location, location, location. So getting started in the swinger lifestyle, it's three things. Communication, communication, communication. I, I, that's what I believe because I do also believe communication is lubrication. Oh, totally. I mean, sometimes I need a little spit too. So, a little bit. Yeah. But that, that's still lubrication. That is still lubrication. It, yeah. Uh, anyway, go back. <laughs> Look at articles and info on our website, hollyandmichael.com, H-O-L-L-I. We have we, tons and tons of, of articles articles and do's and don'ts and this and that. I mean, there's so much information out there. Right. And mind you, these are our opinions. There's yes. no one right way to start swinging or to continue swinging. The only right way is your right way. This is information we share based on talking to, and at this point, over 100,000 couples that are in the lifestyle worldwide. That's a lot of talking. That is. <laughs> The only two uh, continents we haven't been to, and I know the Aussie Swingers are working to bring us down to Australia, is Australia and Africa. And we have plans to be in uh, Johannesburg, and which is South Africa, and possibly uh, East Africa next year also. So look at articles. You by yourself. <laughs> look at, you've got to get over your fears. No, I don't. I like my fears. There's nothing wrong with we any of these. Along. Don't. Yeah, no, there's nothing wrong with these places. We get along. No, no more. No. Doesn't happen. I love you. We'll talk about it. Um, <laughs> hollyandmichael.com H-O-L-L-I build profiles together on websites I mean I'm wearing the swingy hat right here mm -hmm. go to swingy.com and other websites what is it you love so much about that about the website is when you do it together right and there's drop down boxes that show uh, for example you like to swim at night or you know, just anything regarding being together or doing anything sexual together, and you, you drop down the box. Right. You pick out things. Even hobbies that aren't sexually even related. Hobbies, and you do this together. You decide, oh my god, I didn't. I mean, you think, oh my god, I didn't know that about you because it never been discussed before. You, you can't. You said it a few minutes ago. You can't go over every what if or right. every situation. And you know what? You you may not think about it, and you see it, and you're like, oh yeah, I kind of like that, and, and you start talking about it, and it's. Sexy. I, I have an itch on my ankle. Do I'm itching my ankle. I'm itching my ankle. <laughs> I, uh, I also believe that goes on the same token with hobbies. One of the reasons mm -hmm. to ask is so you can see what other couples are into. Right. Michelle Lisa said it earlier. We say it often. I'm going to say it again. Swingers are not just about sex. We have many couples that we played with and one time and, and now we're just friends. The reason we, we do things together that right. we're all interested in. It, like hookah. Hookah. Yeah, hookah. <laughs> Weird things after hookah happen. I'm telling Weird. you, we go to. I wonder if they're real. I wonder if we're like. Yeah, are we hook it up or what? Hook it? And by hookah, we literally mean just hookah. There's no like. I yeah, my. Maybe. Yeah, seriously, come January, recreational. <laughs> Going back though, you learn about hobbies your your partner likes that maybe you didn't know or that they might be interested. Basket weaving. I don't know. You're Crochet. In this? No, no, no. I would, I would do, um, what's that called? The, uh, gla um, stained glass? Stained glass. I would do that. Okay. I would do that with you. I'll set that up. I'm not real crafty, but I would, I would attempt to do You're the only guy that. there, but. Probably. Oh. oh, that bodes well for me. Yeah, it does. Bodes well for me. What did you do last night? Well, I was surrounded by women. Yeah. Mm. Guys, that's really, when you're single, not a bad idea. I'm not being sexist here, mm -hmm. saying that more women do this or that, but if they're perceived to, go sign up for that class. It's like the kid in college the, or something that goes to home ec because you're surrounded not by Not in college, you mean high school. High school. Yeah. You're surrounded by girls. There's uh, one of our son's friends, he, as a, as a elective, he got put accidentally in ballet <laughs> in eighth grade. 
And then his buddy said, why aren't you switching out of it? He said, do you realize I am the only guy in that class? And he's a stud to those girls. And those, yeah, he, those said, girls. he said, I'm the, in eighth grade, say what you will. But this guy, this kid, this young man he's is smart. loving it. Smart. And he's he wants to date these girls. He's got the perfect in. I That's mean, uh, okay, think about this. You're, you're, you go to cheerleading practice and you're throwing women in the air with. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. All right, I want to get back to how to get started in this swimming lifestyle, true. though. Communication, communication, communication. Go to hollyandmichael.com. That's H O L L I A N D M I C H A E L. just change my name. Build a pro. No, I'll never do that. Build a profile together because it provides a great learning experience. And there are many, many other ways. Talk to friends in the lifestyle, meet people in the lifestyle, share your thoughts with each other. When your partner comes home and says, what do you think of this? You might get a little, you know, what, I'm not enough? That's not what your partner's saying. Your partner's no. saying, hey, can we talk about this? Right. Last but not least, because there are so many other ways, what you and I call TTLC. Trust, talk, lick it. Lick it? <laughs> well, that too. Listen, communicate. Lick it. Lick it. No, what is TTLC? Finger licking good. TTLC. Trust, talk, listen, communicate. There you go. When you trust each other enough to truly have one of those talks that most people would consider difficult. Or uncomfortable. Or uncomfortable. You're now listening and at that point you're communicating. Don't have a response to what your partner is saying. Prepare before they're done. Wait for them to finish. Take it inside and think about mm -hmm. it. Christy um, on, on Facebook made a comment that she at work as an, as an HR person has had to investigate situations involving the lifestyle. Bill asked... He thought that couldn't lose your job. That shouldn't be, or is that discrimination? She makes a great point. It's the policy of the company. And it's unfortunate that you even have to worry about it. But I love Christy for making sure we all understand. As open-minded as she is, people have to do their job. Yes. And when HR called me, it was recorded. They had to pay me out. She had no problem having to pay me out a hefty sum mm -hmm. with that company. Because she agreed it was wrong, but she had to follow the rules right. of that organization. Shame, uh, this is a question I yeah. don't know if you know, or Christina's. Can you uh, advocate for your company to change that policy if it's not hurting them at all? Great question. Uh, Christy, you can, you can write that on Facebook uh, Live or personally to us, and we can respond and share that with people. One of the concerns I would feel an HR director or any employee would have... Mm -hmm. What happens if they're not in the lifestyle, but they know people who are and try to advocate on their behalf? What do you think the company's going to think about you? That you're one of them. Yes. <laughs> one of them. And now you, even though you're not in the lifestyle, you've now outed yourself. Right. One of the reasons why we made the decision, which was tough, to change the name of the show from Swing with Holly and Michael to Modern Love with Holly and Michael. Humbly, many people say they want to refer their friends to listen because we talk about being single, we talk about being a couple, we talk non-lifestyle, we talk lifestyle, we talk about open, honest communication. But by, and these were vanilla people who even said this to us. Yes. We love what you say. We practice the open communication, the open-mindedness, and being sex positive with each other, mm -hmm. and sharing fantasies and fulfilling them together. But we can't suggest our friends listen because we're fearful that they're going to think we're swingers. Right. We understood that. Yeah. Swingers yes. said the same thing. Hey, you know we're swingers, but we can't be outed. Mm -hmm. So going with modern love, because it is the mindset you need, the life you deserve. It's modern, and today yes. it's love. Come on, let's all just... It's not yesteryear love. No, it's not yes... What? <laughs> yesteryear. You're so silly. Or Fortnite love. You're so silly. That's I learned that recently. Fred and Dina, great to hear from you. They're talking about the best sex they ever had is when they're together, lifestyle is just extra spice. We couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. Wine fun times, we can't wait to come down under two. No pun intended on that one. It's not salt because you put salt on everything. What do you mean? <laughs> what are you talking about? Living the lifestyle is not salt because you put salt on everything. Living in the lifestyle is not salt. And never mind. What about this? <laughs> Where is your head? I mean, it I don't know. It makes sense in my head. Great news. Uh, I shared earlier, all content on Playboy Radio is now free. It's incredible to be with Dash Radio, wonderful platform, and Playboy Radio will be launching new shows in the very near future, along with a brand new website. I'm excited. It's going to be commercial free, and the content will be free. We'll keep you up to date on that, uh, as will will um, us. Yeah, anyway, we'll keep you updated on that. I don't know where I was going with that. 
Uh, yeah, this is not the new studio. This is actually home because my ankle is tweaked and it's very hard for me to walk on it and I can't go into the studio. And I can't carry him. And she can't carry me. Oh my God. The new I studio. Two of me. The new studio will have um, more Playboy stuff than actually. Probably. We don't have any. This is, no. this is one of our walls that we um, have in our house. Have in our house that we de identified things <laughs> just again, just for being, you know, you just got to be safe. You right. Be safe. Of course. I believe I talk about, I coach, and I share that there are three solutions to every problem. Okay. All right. I don't feel, and you and I have had this, this is one area where we don't fight, but I know sometimes you get frustrated with me because I'll say to you, baby, I know the problem. Just one area? Uh -huh. <laughs> baby, <laughs> baby, I know the problem. Mm -hmm. Let's work on a solution. And you'll say something, I'll say, baby, I know you're readdressing the problem. But sometimes I feel better if I get the problem out. Like I right. need to express how I feel about the problem. I need to reiterate uh, this, and that's this, fair. this. That's and some, fair. And sometimes I just, I want it to be out there so we can discuss it. Uh, that's fair. It's getting to that point for me, as you know, and that's where communication is so important. Uh, agree to disagree, fight fair. When we debate or discuss, we do it lovingly. And if I think what I'm saying is coming off, excuse me, too harsh, I ask you to understand if you think what you're saying is this or that, you ask me to understand. So to me, the three solutions to every problem are, are I think simple, but it's accept it, change it, or leave it. And by that, I mean, if you can't accept it, change it. Right. If you can't change it, leave it. Having financial problems, don't just accept it. Find a way to change it. Yes. Okay. Not everyone can. Not everyone can go out and get a job that pays $200 an hour or even $15 an hour. Mm -hmm. So how do you accept that? Well, you can learn a trade. Yes. You can go drive for Uber or Lyft. Actually, I think they give you cars now. You have they to do, do a certain, give you, cars. you have to do a, uh, our recent Lyft driver told us if they, if he does 75 rides a week, uh -huh. the car they give him is free. Yes. And he gets a huge discount on gas. All this. Anyway. So they're out there. There are opportunities. There are opportunities. Yes. Now you can say, but I don't have a driver's license and I'm broke. Okay. There are jobs that don't require even a high school education. Right. I just believe that if you know the problem and you dwell on the problem, you're going to get nowhere. If you accept it, you can begin to look for solutions. Right. You can begin to change it. Begin, begin to change it. <laughs> or you can leave it. There are some problems, and I'm not talking financial related because those are very difficult problems. We get it. We understand it. We've experienced it. But there are problems sometimes, though. You know, if you're swingers like us, and this single woman or that single man or that couple is causing drama, leave it. Leave it. Oh my Gone. God. It's so not worth it. Gone. And don't worry about hurting people's feelings because a lot of people think that, oh my God, I'm going to hurt the feelings and I'm right. going to create this bond. Whose feelings matter the most? Your partner's. And yours. Yeah. Right? So yours. if you're single, yours. Right. And if you're together, you and your partner. Exactly. It's and you know what? Everyone has heartache. Everyone gets a no. Everyone. So just, just accept it. And I agree. On. Making mistakes is something everybody does, I family. I don't. Everybody makes them. <laughs> Learning from them is not, though. No, that's hard to do. I say family, and I'm going to repeat it because blood may make us related. It's loyalty that makes us family. And to us, being a swinger, living the lifestyle is more attitude than action. And it's a journey without a destination. Mm -hmm. That's how I look at it because it's worked for us. Our way will not work for everyone. P bits and pieces may. Of course. But not all of I'm it. I'm going to share those bits and pieces. Yep. I'm yep. going to share everything. Fred and Dina said, bye-bye, get rid of it. I agree with them. Yes. Drama, no time for it. Yep. Love little interesting facts. So I want to share with all of you in pockets, you know, ask swingers living in the lifestyle or any way you want to practice life, consensually monogamous, meaning you're not cheating, mm -hmm. or consensually non-monogamous. If you're single, guys, women's biggest dating deal breakers. Okay. Right? Yeah. I'm going to give you two of them. Okay. A new survey conducted by, I've got it written right here, a new survey conducted by the dating app Sapio, S-A-P-I-O. Not sure why they want to Sapio, wow. I'm wondering if in another language Sapio doesn't mean I'm a I'm a sap. Anyway, new survey conducted by the dating app Sapio asked more than 2,000 people about their dating and relationship deal breakers. Okay. I wrote down so I didn't screw it up. Okay. All right. Women ages 18 to 40 who are looking for someone to date or hook up with. So couples, if you're looking to hook up with single women, listen to this. Men and women that are single that are looking to hook up with other women or women, <laughs> listen to this. 
So ages 18 to 40, women looking for someone to date or hook up, hook up was said. Their number one deal breaker for them, ready? Yeah. Sexism. Sexism? Sexism. That top the list of unforgivable behaviors in a potential hookup Ex or date. Explain sexism. Uh, anti-women. Oh. You know, or anti-men. Right. You know, as a man, just sexist. If they're right. being sexist. Okay. 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 It's an ism. It's being discriminated. That's the number one? They thought, well, would you want to date or even hook up with a guy that really is Didn't against everything him? women stand for? Not at all. Holy cow, not at all. Okay, I so talk to him. that, hence, their number one deal breaker. Hmm. For dating and hookups. Okay. I would think that means marriage too, but I guess if you won't go on a date with them, you're not going you're to marry, marry him, right? You're not going to marry him. Ross. All right, unless you're Ross, who marries everybody. Yeah. Maybe I did propose. <laughs> All right, the number two dating deal breaker, according to Sapio, of women ages 18 to 40 looking for someone to date or hook up with, the number two dating deal breaker behind sexism is racism or intolerance. Yes. And... Go ahead. I totally agree with that. Goes back to the isms. And it's judge. It's judgmental. It's judge judgeism. It, well, it's 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 being prejudiced. Yes. Being racist. Being sexist. Mm -hmm. Being genderist. Uh, which is kind of the same. And but you know what? If, I can't, if you can't accept me, I'm not going to accept you. Well, I, yeah, exactly. I'm not even going to deal with you. I'm not going to deal with you. I just I, you and I just I find we don't have time for that. I don't. And when we date single women, or if we go on a date with, I mean, in the lifestyle, we date as a couple. Whether the other person is a single woman or a couple, it's it's chemistry. Mm -hmm. It's not love. L U V or L O V E for you and I. It's chemistry. Yes. Some swingers who are couples like to have more of an emotional attachment, right. not a polyamorous attachment, but an emotional attachment. Right. That's not you and I. No. That's just not no. the way you and I do it. One. All right. <laughs> One other thing we touched on some yesterday. I want to finish it out. What he really means. What does a guy really mean? I have no idea. We're going to decode a few guy phrases. Because sometimes the language barrier between men and women makes it look like we can't connect and we can't be on the same page. Right? right? I don't know what God was thinking. <laughs> like, All right. When a guy says, well, I think God was thinking, if you believe in that, believe in God or a higher power, I'm going to give you some challenges in life. Why? I don't know. Okay. You're a great friend. Let me decode that for you. I've spoke to many men. Mm. I'm going to tell you what we all think. That means no guy wants to be friend-zoned by a lady he's attracted to. If he starts talking about being friends before you ever mentioned it, he has no romantic interest in you. Totally. Just like you may not have romantic interest in him, but that's it. He puts you in the friend zone. Yes. If a guy says, I love you, this one is conditional. Well, no, this one is conditional. Okay. If the guy says it in an attempt to get lucky or while getting lucky, it might not be sincere. How do you know he's attempting to get lucky? Uh, trying to get in your pants. You're saying no and he says, I love you. Ooh, yeah. Okay. That's why I'm saying it's conditional. Okay. okay. That's why I'm saying it's conditional. But if a guy makes a promise or a statement post-orgasm, he already got lucky. Right. And guys, I'm not being sexist, I feel, when I say this. Let's just admit it. If we're waiting to get off, or we want to get off, and she's not providing it, or he, you know, the I love you is a great card to drop. It's like, you know, it's like two aces shown in Texas Hold'em, and you got the other two aces. Yeah, anyway, bottom line, you're throwing that in. Okay. Because you think it's a sure thing. Right. It's a win. All right. Last but not. No, I got two more. I'm a virgin by choice. By choice. Guys, I'm not picking on our gender. It's just we're so easy to pick on. 99 times out of 100, a virgin by choice is actually a guy who is so socially awkward that he's never had a girl give him a second chance yes. or a second glance. Guys, there is hope. When you ask yourself, why, how did me, Michael, end up with her? It's because, well, actually, my, I don't know. Actually, my, I don't know. My head trainer brought her over at the gym that I part own. But typically, the reason I was with women was I was willing to say hi. I had a rule not meeting women at the gym. Yes. Broke that rule with you. Sucker. Sucker. Broke that woman with you. Guys, don't be afraid to take a chance. Don't be afraid to say hello. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. That's Answers what I'm saying. Know if you don't ask the it is, and I have one last one. Okay. I'm sorry. A man is truly sorry, or he he's run out of steam and doesn't want to argue anymore. <laughs> right? That's e generally the case. Either way, when we say this as men, please accept the apology and let's wrap it up. Let's I'm just wrap it up. Yeah, and I thank you in advance. Um, Oh, I got two more. What time? Okay. All right, let me give them real quick. Can we still be friends? When we men say that... You want sex, though. Thank you.
stupid. We're not stupid either. We're asking if we can still have sex. And then, what do I have here? Oh, I need space. Uh, you're seeing someone else. Or women feel the same way at times. They're being suffocated. Yes. If a man says this or a woman says this, give them a little break. Give them a little space. Go let them have fun on their own. You know, what do they say? Uh, if it, if it's, oh, no. You throw it out there. If it comes back, it's yours to keep. If it's not, if it doesn't, it was never yours to begin with. Sure. Something like that. Yeah. I don't know. If you, you don't miss it if it's not gone. I don't know. No. Absence makes a hardcore finder. Yes. Or out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. That's, yeah. All right. I don't know. But if a guy says this to you, take space yourself. If a woman says this to you, take space yourself. To me, it's simple. Being a swinger, living the lifestyle is amazing for you and I. Mm -hmm. Being in any consensually non-monogamous relationship is amazing for you and I. And we are proud that Playboy Radio, powered by Gas Radio, lets us discuss modern love here every day, Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. Hang out with us off air, Michael Pockets on Facebook, at SwingTime69 on Twitter, and you? Real Holly Pockets on Instagram and Holly Pockets on Snapchat. Snapchat. I wish you made it easier. I am so sorry. A lot of on-location things coming up soon. World, it's been a great pleasure to uh, to have you join us. Tell your friends about it. We'd love to have them join us too. Yes. Are you ready, baby? Yep. Swing, swing. We love you, family. I know. I still hear the... Hold on. Let me hear it. Is it swing music? I think it's actually swing. The, oh the generation of swing music playing in the background of our headphones. We must be picking it is. up... We must be picking up a signal somewhere. That's funny. Yeah. We're picking up a signal somewhere. It's still my... It's not the microphone. No, it's, it's the weird. headphones. Yeah, it's the headphones. The headphones are picking up a signal. Oh my God, that's so weird. Yeah. These are strong microphones, but... Oh, well. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to hobble over now and uh, turn it down. Or turn it off. I'm good at turning things off. I'm not so good at turning things on. Don't. You want to do it? Peace out, sucker. Peace out, everybody. And don't forget... Check out swingy.com.